Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the uh, Birkenstocks to my Air Jordans, Bradford Omen. Hey, that's me. Just my toesies out, wild, open, and free. Damn and hippie. The Adidas slides to my Air Jordans. Nate Laux. I'm so 90s. <laughs> wait, wait, why the fuck do you get full on sneakers and we're just flip flops? The whole point of this is supposed to make fun of you and make me look good. Have you not been listening to the show ever? No, like, this is the first time. But like, there's at least should have been like an equal shoe comparison. Like, you're I mean, like, you got an no, expensive no, footwear. This least. is footwear. You got an expensive one. It's just footwear, Brad. Are Birkenstocks that expensive? They are. Birkenstocks are not cheap. No. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. All well, right. hey, that it's was good to have you back. Kind of a compliment, motherfucker. Yeah, seriously, oh. it was better than mine. I like Air Jordans, though. <laughs> I love Air Jordans. Hey, welcome back. It's been a, it's been like a month. It's, it's been a while. It's been a few weeks. Brad's we, been freaking. He's in Britain. I Britain was traveling. Sick. No one calls it Britain anymore. Well, he was know. in Britain and then he was in Britain. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, great Britain. Uh, oh, great Britain. Uh, it's uh, good Britain to me. Amen, brother. Oh, my God. Uh, and then no, got yeah. not COVID. I went to London for a bit. I got sick when I came back. Then Thankfully. I, then I got COVID. Yeah, you got COVID. I didn't get COVID, but I had a terrible sinus infection and bronchitis. Uh, Nate, I don't know. He was ready. The, he was ready the whole time. I wonder what the you difference know what, guys, is. I, I take care of myself. What's the difference? Are we two fat pieces of shit? And Nate's like in the best shape of his life right now. Probably. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I feel uh, like I don't believe that. I don't know. I'm I don't fine. believe that. Uh, so anyway, uh, welcome back to Go Flix Yourself. Uh, we've missed you. I we hope have you've, uh, missed us. We've missed each other. We've we missed, have been doing our ten have. to one podcast. So yes. Yeah. So honestly, if you're an SNL fan, <laughs> Ben and I have been stumbling trying, through, yeah. trying not that hard. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a movie podcast, comedy podcast. Podcast where we talk about the latest movies we've seen. We talk about some movie trailers, and if somebody writes a game, we play a game. And TV uh, shows. And no, we don't talk about TV shows, especially not this time because we we haven't recorded in so long. We do have some movies to get through. I'm gonna talk about TV show though. No, okay. I am too. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's the same one. Oh, well, maybe. I hope so. I don't know. Hey, I can't wait, buddy. Yeah. So we we are a little bit pressed for time because we've got so many movies to talk about. So Brad, let's just get through the sponsor. Just as is just. Do we really have a sponsor? Quickly as possible. So who is the sponsor? <laughs> and go. Oh, we definitely got a sponsor. Hello, governor. Oh yeah, that's that's right. Right. Oh, I just got back from foggy London town. <laughs> ben, ben, what's your favorite British memory? Hello, man. You got you got a favorite British memory that just gets your noggin moving, does it? No. No, you ain't got a favorite British memory. No, I don't. In it? Ah. Uh, in it? That's that's sad, isn't it, Nate? Yeah. Yeah, this fucker over here done ain't got no British memories. <laughs> <laughs> this fucker over here I have British memories. Uh, well, you know what? Because I was in London, I brought I brought back a British sponsor. Oh, God. I did. It's, all right, all right. It's, it's, it's tasty. You know, you're going to laugh because you, you're, you're going to think it's not quite a British snack. But if is. this is just like American Kit Kats, I'm going to be so <laughs> Actually, I got I mean, these at the airport in Heathrow, although, and they were just American I love Kit Kats, because if it's Kit Kats, I am so happy right now. I mean, British Kit Kats, they do have, uh, they taste a little bit better in uh, the UK because they- No, they don't. They use a different, it's cho- freaking, they use a different chocolate, and hey, it's, it's a better but, chocolate. But also, you're American. Yeah. It's, it's a better act chocolate. Like it. Eat American. No, the chocolate act like is it. way better than American chocolate, so oh, yeah, geez. fuck that. Uh, shut up, white boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, this is it's a bit wafer, isn't it? You're gonna it? you're gonna laugh because when when you yeah, because fi- because freaking Great Britain super diverse. Because when you yeah, find out, look, yeah, they, they definitely know how to <laughs> make good food. Because when you find out what this snack is, you're gonna be like, well, that's not a British snack, but it is because we don't have it here, and it's a flavor profile that is a little bit more common uh, in the UK in general. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot it over to Ben. So you can take a little handful of this. Oh boy. Just Scooch it, scooch don't, it over. Don't look at the front or the back of the bag. Just grab a little handful out of there. Maybe give something to Nate too. I oh, mean, why don't you just send the bag over here just in case they like it? I'm not. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> just take some of that. Make sure you give them. Make sure so you can get a good flavor. I got a kernel. Wants I got one nice, kernel. Nice, it's popcorn, so you do know that. I don't know. It's like cracked pepper. Um, I don't know. I only had two kernels, so I didn't have is a ton. Salmon. But- is it salmon? It tastes like fish. Tilapia? Mm-mm. It does taste like fish. No, um, it's not fish, fish and chips. It's not fish. It's not fish and chips. Are you sure? No, it's not fish and chips. There's a definitely a, a very. It's not fish great and though. Yeah, it's not real good. What is this? You're on the path as far as thinking about something that's fried. Is this tuna? 
Not tuna. There's no. What no, else? There's no fish. fish. It's not fish. Is it? Um, is it? Um, okay. Just what is it? Oh, you want me to tell you? Oh my god. You all know what this snack is? Yeah. My, my favorite British memory is this never happening again. Oh uh, well, I got a whole bag full of British snacks, mate. So they're going to be coming back around or rinron round. No rinron round. Uh, well, hey, as long as they come back on Rinrun Round. So this is a brand called Proper Popcorn, and they have a flavor uh, in the UK that is popcorn chicken popcorn from KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, that that makes more sense. Yeah, no, yeah. F- definitely fish. It tastes like the the original recipe seasoning from KFC. When you when when you when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that's it's that's not a- it's not good though. I like it actually. I think it's really. Yeah, good. Brent, Brent's had nine handfuls since we've been know. sitting here. You're, so you're acting a lot like me. Don't go there. <laughs> this is the first time I've tried it, and it's, it's actually really it's like, good. It's like Nate with his ketchup fucking Pringles. Oh, those are freaking good. I knew this existed over there, and they also did have uh, some KFC chicken flavored chips. That were, they weren't now, there I, while I was I, there. I have heard that like British people love Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like it's like the yeah, number well, one. Yeah, well, they there. actually like chicken flavored things because uh, one of the regular Lay's flavors over there is rotisserie chicken, and those chips were actually really good too. Um, but but yeah, it was. I, I really like this actually. It's pretty good. So prop, proper popcorn, KFC popcorn chicken well, flavor. Uh, I found thank, it. Thanks for sponsoring proper popcorn. Yeah, thanks for bringing your popcorn over and putting it in my mouth. Hello, Governor. Thanks for all the loonies. Yeah, I like to pop my kernels in here. Yeah, you got some loonies. Little pop, some pop, pop. Don't want you popping your kernels anywhere, oh, buddy. Oh, trust me, man. I'm gonna pop my kernels all over. Deutschmarks and what? Bunch of, I don't know what what what's the what's the currency over there? The euro. Oh, is that what they're on? Yeah. Really? It's not the British pound anymore? No, it's the pound. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Fuck they you. specifically didn't go with you. You asshole. <laughs> oh, the euro? No, no, you idiot. Oh, no, it's British pounds. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I, I do. I do have some other snacks that I'll oh, that great, I'll bring. I great. have I have a great lineup coming up. Not oh. just from the UK either, but like there's some Easter stuff coming that oh, you guys are gonna just fucking ooh, you're gonna be so mad. Oh, I hope there's not a peep because I hate peeps so much. You like peeps? No. No, peeps are gross. No, nope. I'm not going to give anything away. There is a tilapia and or salmon <laughs> flavor in my a mouth. Tilapia right now. peep. I just cannot <laughs> shake this. It, my mouth tastes disgusting. <laughs> you're you're ta- you're just tasting what you, like the what would be like the fried breading flavor. Do you only eat of fried walleye? fish? Do you only eat fried fish? Yeah. Do you ever only eat fried fish? No, I never eat fried fish. No, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't taste like a good listen, fish fry. Because i like, we're oh, freaking in Northwest Indiana. You, you better eat, eat some freaking fried. It's like fish. asking me, do you eat deep fried vegetables? No, I'm not going to take a bad thing and try to make it good. <laughs> I'm just not going to eat it. Are you not a fish fan? No. I'll, if I'm going to eat fish, though, I'm going to eat like you know blackened plank salmon or something. Oh, actually you're healthy. so fancy. Well, no, ha- healthy. If you're gonna, are you healthy? To, no. But if I'm gonna try, I'm gonna <laughs> eat say healthy. I am eating salmon, but exactly. Like, I'm not gonna have like you know. Oh, let's just like you know. Let me just do a, a raw devine shrimp in, in, a, in a nice in a nice garlic aioli. No, I'm gonna do coconut shrimp deep fried. Like I'm not. I'm not yeah, idiot. deep fried. You get deep fried. It's delicious. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your taste buds are still broken from COVID. Yeah, probably. Yeah, idiot. Anyway, at least you don't have the thing where food tastes like rotting flesh. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's a real thing. Cool. Um, <laughs> hey, Brad. Ah. What are the What are the thirty seven movies hey, that you've seen? No, I, can we Can we do this first before we get to Brad's movies? Sure. You were in England. I you, was. You interviewed the Argyle cast, and I went to London. Yeah, talk about press, that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I guess we should give you your yeah. humble, Brad. I went to London for a press junket for Slash Film uh, to cover the movie Argyle. That's Matthew Vaughn's latest movie, the director of the Kingsman movies, which and I saw. Kick Ass and X Men First Class and whatnot. And, I like uh, Matthew Vaughn. I got to interview uh, Bryce Dallas Howard and Brian Cranston and John Cena and Ariana DeBose and Matthew Vaughn himself. Did not get to interview Sam Rockwell and Henry Cavill uh, because when you do these press junkets, uh, you have to put requests in for the interviews. They tell you the talent they have available, and you say, Here, who, here's who he would like to get. Uh, and then they, the publicists talk to the actor or director's representatives, and they determine... So like, why which, doesn't Henry Cavill like you? It wasn't Henry Cavill. Uh, I, I don't know if he would have turned us down or not. It was Sam Rockwell was the one who actually who we knew turned us down. Um, oh, like he legitimately said, I don't want to Sam Rockwell didn't, but Sam Rockwell's reps did for whatever reason. And it could be just because uh, even though Slash Film is a pretty sizable, you know, well-known website... Among certain entertainment circles, it's not big enough. we're not the New York Times. You know, we're not Vanity Fair. We're you know that, not that kind of thing. And so sometimes it's just the reps not necessarily being familiar enough with us to like is tell the them this is a actor? good idea. Is he the biggest actor in this film? Um, he's, or would he's, he have had the most requests? No, no. He's I mean he's, he's a pretty big. No, dude. He, I mean he's the he's the co lead of the yeah. movie. No, 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 with no, Bryce no, Dallas Howard. No, no. He was he was really we're, good in this. No, no. 
the question is, is he the biggest act? He's not the, the Henry Cavill is huge. Yeah, Henry Cavill is the biggest actor. Cavill, Cavill. Cavill. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge in this. Yeah. Not in, in this, sorry. John Cena is John arguably very famous. a yeah. larger, super fam- uh, super famous, famous person. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's more, pe- than that. more people know uh, John Cena than know Sam Rockwell. I would say Sam Rockwell is probably a more respected actor. Absolutely, yeah. but John Cena yeah. is yeah. way more popular. Sam Rockwell sure. is great. In I know, yeah. And I, again, I'm not saying that because I'm saying he's bad. Like, he's so, amazing. So anyway, so Sam Rockwell turned us down and... Uh, Actors were paired for these interviews. So Sam was paired with Henry. Henry wasn't doing solo interviews. And so since Henry was paired with Sam, we didn't get Henry Cavill either. So I did not get to interview either of them, which was a little bit of a bummer. But I did end up hearing that uh, Sam Rockwell was getting over being sick and Henry Cavill was getting sick. And so their interviews were not necessarily all that exciting because they were just kind of over it by that point. Yeah, no, Superman was fun. I'm in The Witcher. (laughs) Um, So as a single man, um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, yeah. She's got it. <laughs> she's we got know. it. She's got I it. I have the biggest crush on her. She's got it. She can get it. No, and, and we wouldn't be very clear. Brad is not single. No. No, I am. Yeah. But, but the like, way you said, like, as a single man, Brad. No. Brad, Brad's not like, huh? No, I am, but I love I am her. fully engaged. <laughs> Is she beautiful in person? Absolutely. Okay. She's, she's beautiful. She's nice. She's very, she's very she cool. She seems charming and wonderful. It was lovely to talk to. The one thing that did throw me off a little bit, because this doesn't normally happen, is when I sat down to interview, uh, she was paired with Bri- Brian Cranston, is before the interview even started, she goes, she goes, so did you like the movie? And it's like, don't fucking ask me that when I'm about to interview you, because if, what if I didn't? You're going to make this real weird. <laughs> well, you're going to just lie and say yes, and then you're going to shit on it later. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, ask that. Oh, I loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Give me what I need, knowing that I love the movie, and then you're like, "Worst argoyle." I would have watched an argoyle, argoyle. Ar- an argoyle sweater. Argoyle is, is what I would have watched. So I'm interested because I, this Did is you the like world the that I live. No, we're gonna get to that because I saw it too. But I, I'm interested as just a like interested in what you do. So when you go over there, you're there for a week, right? No, no, I I was literally there two for days. like two and a half days. days. Okay. What is it like? What does that day look like? Because you're only interviewing them one day, right? Yeah. And so, is it just you're in a room, or do they say, "Okay, Brad, your turn. Go into the room where the actors are." So it depends. Um, I've been in situations where, when you were doing a set visit, we're on set, and uh, either we'll talk to the actors in between like uh, setups, actually on the set of the movie, or they'll take us to like a room close to set for a bit, and they'll bring in the cast who is like so waiting this? nearby. This this was a a press junket situation that they had set up at a hotel they have some rooms rented out they have a whole camera crew there in each room uh where they're seated they're full we're all fully lit like if we're uh the, the, their interviews are set up as if i was doing interviews on tv um because and, some of them are because some, yeah some people are doing these for tv or even just for video do, online do they so this would be funny if like it's like uh, you know byron allen comes in right before you, it's all fully lit you walk in the room they just shut the lights <laughs> off they're like, yeah this one's not going online it's fine <laughs> uh we don't need this guy to have yeah. HD face. We don't want any of that. Makeup. No, honestly, just so we can look at him. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So it's uh, yeah, full camera crews and everything. Like it's set up that way. And I don't prefer this this kind because. When they're doing TV setups, they give you a lot less time because they have to get through more people, uh, and they're trying to do like you know more quick bites as opposed to like digging into like in depth interview stuff. So like I prefer if it's just going to be audio, getting ten to fifteen minutes, and you know even if it's not in video, it's cool to have these interviews on video because it's it's fun, you know. Um, but but yeah, I would prefer to have more time rather than you know having the professional crew shoot it and you know that that kind of thing. Top of your head, uh, top the top of your brain here. Um, what is the longest time you've ever spent with somebody and and like me? He spent uh, a lot of time. Like with me. I know that you you've interviewed Edgar right before, and I think you've had a kind of a longer conversation with him. I, yeah, I spent like an hour and a half on the phone with Edgar Wright one time. You think that that's the longest you've ever spent Absolutely, on the phone? Absolutely, one hundred percent. An hour and a half is a that's ton a of that's time. a that's a friendship. That, that, that's, 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 that's a friendship. He's going to be in your wedding, friend. right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that that and then there, uh, this was this wasn't just me, but. Um, Two of the set visits if I did. You say Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm gonna mm-hmm. kill you. No, no. Uh, mm-hmm. I, went, I did a set visit for Real Steel, and Sean Levy, the director, sure. came, came to dinner and was there with us for like two and a half hours. Did you go to dinner with Taika Waititi? Yeah, that's the other one I was gonna say. Is Taika Waititi came out to dinner with us for Thor Ragnarok, and he was there for like three and a half. Did you guys hours. listen to his Smartless episode? I did. A lot of, he, lot of cocaine. He, a lot of cocaine. But he also came across a little different. Like yeah, he was, a, lot of, a lot of cocaine. Well, also, just not as or a little more serious. Or he maybe was just, he was more reserved. Actually, like, no, I felt like did you? So when you listen to that, like, yeah. But but it was because he he was he had literally just gotten off a flight. Yeah. 
So I'm sure he was just like sitting up tired. It, it just wasn't. But normal I didn't yet. know if that's just kind of his personality. You I know? think I honestly give him there, there credit are, here I, because he just got off a flight. That's got to be. Tough. I think that's it too. But I, I also don't, I think he's the kind of person he having spent some. I was just like, you would him, you would know. Yeah. He's he's let not, us tell you what it's like. He's not <laughs> he's not one of those people who is always on because like when we were at dinner he wasn't like high energy cracking jokes like he still would you know naturally but he wasn't like he was putting on a show or anything. You so know? did he put on a show? <laughs> no. Um, and like uh, someone like Aziz Ansari is like that too. Honestly, like you would think that he would be a little more yeah. uh, open, energetic, that kind yeah. of thing. Because his actually, comedy is all uh, ah, you know. It's, well, not it's, quite. It's, I mean, that's, that's more Randy, you know, yeah, from the, funny people. But yeah. but yeah, he he has more energy. But in like real life, talking to him, he's more reserved and a little bit like has like, like you can tell he like is more chill, just like in his normal life. Sure, so. sure. Uh, but yeah, so I saw Argyle. Uh, they showed us the movie before we did the interview. Gargoyle. You want to talk about it? Because I, I I saw. Yeah, it. for sure. The weird thing is is so because we did the junkie interviews, we had to see the movie first, obviously. Um, but they had the world premiere in London the day after we did the interview. So it's like, okay, well, why aren't you guys just sending us to like to the fucking cool world premiere then? And I can go hang out with Dua Lipa or something. Well, yeah, why would they though? You're a bunch did of Did you schlubs. interview Dua Lipa? No, because she wasn't there. Oh, she didn't get there until the day that I left. Did you? That's not a real question though, Brad. What, why wouldn't they send a bunch of press nerds to the world? Well, but premiere? that's the thing, though. It's like they're they're not all nerds like me. Um, but like they're no, but like they they do send like people to like press people all the time to the world premiere. Like that's what the red carpet is for. And like there's there's always a bunch of press at world premieres, you know. But isn't that just all television? No, not at all. Mm, I disagree. Well, you're wrong. Um, so yeah, so I did see Argyle, and uh, I I saw it at the theater. I was I was um, I liked it, but I was lukewarm on it initially. But the more I thought about it, the more I appreciated uh, how wild and unhinged it got as it mm-hmm. went on. Because mm-hmm. the first half of the movie is very much what you see in the trailer. The setup of like, oh, Bryce Dallas Howard is this damsel in distress who's caught up in this world of intrigue that she doesn't understand and she doesn't know why. Uh, and she's created these novels that are somehow tied to a real spy world. And she gets caught up and Sam Rockwell is trying to protect her from all these deadly spies. The second half digs into wild, twisty Matthew Vaughn yeah. is crazy territory. Yeah, like they, robot dogs. They, they flip. They flip it. Yeah, and there there are literally, I'm not joking, six or seven different twists that totally change oh, wow. the, the game of the movie. Yeah, it becomes really fun. Yeah, it's it, 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 I had a lot of fun with it, and the more I thought about it, especially there's two action sequences in the third act. You haven't seen anything like this in a, in a movie before. Whoa, that's saying something. And, but, but, and not necessarily in like a oh this is cool John Wick kind of way it's just like oh my god this is so weird and silly but and like fun. Yeah, yeah but it's fun um, and so I, for the most part I, I honestly walked away enjoying it I, I gave it a good review and I really did like it did you think though like I, I liked it as well it, I thought it was about 20 minutes too long yes um, it, it, does, it does feel like it overstays it welcome. it's welcome a bit but did you feel like they should have went a little bit more bloody like Kingsman I felt like that could have been fun because there was some really great action. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen some of that in I don't, the goriness that Matthew Vaughn has done before. I, I did think that as well, but also I feel like it. I know this is a different story. This is a different world. I mean, it's a similar world, but like, you know. I think it also might have detracted away from the core of the movie that really unfolds in the second half which well, this isn't going to spoil anything but there's a big romance plot that starts to unfold in the second half that is not shown at all in any of the marketing or anything like nope, that no nope. and because i think that he wanted to lean into that and keep it romantic he probably didn't want to make like lean too hard into the r-rated nature of it which is why they probably kept it the way they did um also it just because yeah, it, it is almost it, a romance story and it makes it, it more marketable it, it becomes too. that way if it's pg-13 um, it's more marketable audience score of 71 percent what do you think that the Rotten Tomato score? Oh, the Rotten Tomato score is like thirty-two percent, thirty-four percent. Oh, it, that's too low. Yeah, it got, too low. It, it got it got hit pretty hard by critics, and I disagree because I do think there's a lot of fun to be had. Is I it because they flew you to Britain? No, not at all. No, because because like because because for a while I was like Mate, they didn't fly you to Britain. No, but I, I get you why said no. No, but no, I, no, hold on. I, you I said no. Like they I know flew you to not, fucking Britain. I know that's not no, why. no, that's not why. No, that's not why. We know. Nate, Brad, Brad and Nate I know. Came to Brad and I know. Wait, I don't know. wait, is that Nate why you could invite one person and he invited me? You, all right. You, you said that you were sick, and that's why we couldn't hang out. Well, he was sick of you. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche, brother. Bro, governor. But no, uh, Matt, Matthew Vaughn, I think, is someone uh, people 
you either like him or right. like you it, hate him. He's an M Night I like Shyamalan. Yeah. I like him. I mostly like him. Um, I did, I didn't like the Golden Circle as much as the first Kingsman. Yep. The Kingsman I mean, is fucking bonkers. I just I'm I did, the, I'm I did not see that. Through the first <laughs> half an hour of that actually, I just started it last night. It's very odd. It's it's so far it's just like it's in the build up stage. Yeah. Um, but and I, and I initially one of the things I thought too is that I I almost wish that he would have. Kingsman is one of my favorite action films, by the way. I love Kingsman. the original, the Kingsman. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, great, great. It, no, it's, it's really good. I really love um, it. favorite. All, like of all one time? of my favorite action movies ever. ever? Wow. I do. I love it. We're gonna, I we're gonna genuinely have to, love well, it. Well, hold on, Brad. We're gonna have to make sure we'll that show more action. It's movies. gory yeah, and it's not that Kingsman is bad, but no, no, no. It's but like, yeah. gory. It's fun. You it is. It's I'm British. Surprised you like gory action since you don't like gore otherwise. Well, I don't like horror gore. I don't like like gore porn. Gore, like, gore. Um, we gotta get introduced some, some more action. Yeah, the, so there's a lot of action moves. The I'm second sure. half, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you said that, but yeah. then you said, yeah, the, but you like, you said, the, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, you know that you said, <laughs> you said out loud, the Kingsman is one of my favorite <laughs> action movies of is. all time. It's well, I didn't say of all time, but you it's just, one of my you, favorite because if you say it's one of my time. favorite, you it implies all time. exactly. That being said, I'm just saying I didn't wrong. say that. It can't be. It is one of my favorite. Stop chewing in the mic. What? <laughs> that can't it be true. It means that Listen, you, you and I are having a bit here. Let him eat. You sex. have a very small set of data. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not going to be lectured by somebody that puts Jean Claude Van Jean Claude Van Damme on his like Mount Rushmore of great actors. All right, you, I will not be lectured by somebody that you loves leave sudden death, Lionheart, Bloodsport, Kickboxer, <laughs> Cyborg. Out of this conversation, uh, the right, quest exactly. underrated. Okay, a uh, universal soldier. Thinks, fine, universal soldier returns. Okay, that legitimately thinks Arnold Schwarzenegger's a good actor. He is. Okay, then. he can be. Um, but I initially I, I thought that I would have preferred that the second half, uh, the style of the second half would have been what the whole movie was. But the more I thought about it, the gradual build up is what makes the second half I think work better. So even though I don't like the first half as much as the second half. They do kind of like feed into each other in, in that way. And Sam Rockwell, I, I ended up appreciating great that in this. But Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard are both great. They make a they fantastic, unlikely duo. They have great chemistry, and yeah, they're they're both really good in this. Is this better than the Lost City? There are aspects of it that are more entertaining than than the Lost City. When you brought up the romance thing, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, there are there are aspects of it that I would say it's a better action movie than the Lost sure, City. Sure, sure. Um, because the, the, the Lost City is a rom com yeah. with action elements. Lo- Lost City, I, just, I liked. Howard, I liked. Though, I, she's just a yeah. Terrible. I really liked Lost City. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch the Lost City to really like. No, I, honestly, like of, of all of like it, it really reminded me of like a Romance in the Stone. Yeah, you know, and well, that's, and that, that, that's kind of what this is, but with like Kingsman more, Flair, basically. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. No, I mean, I like that Matthew Vaughn does his own thing. Yeah, he definitely is as a stand-up comedian has a has a voice. And a director has a voice. Yeah, Matthew Vaughn has found his. Yeah, you know right? a Matthew Vaughn movie. Yeah, and but that being said, like he also did what? Didn't he do like Eddie the Eagle? No, he produced Eddie. Oh, Eagle. sorry, produced. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, well, fuck me. Hang on. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was a uh, that was the show. That was we we said we were going to talk about every movie we saw. We only had time for one. Uh, so what trailers do you guys want to talk about? Fuck you. I mean, you guys only did. What half movies an hour did you there. watch, Grandpa? No, I mean, keep going. You started. You did start. So, what movies did you watch, Bram? I watched uh, just a few Sundance movies virtually because I didn't really have much time because I got I got sick and Sundance has a special role in your heart, doesn't it? It really does. That's where I met I met my fiance, Brittany, and that's just where my love for film and my love for Brittany blossomed all mm. over. The two great loves of your life. The two well, great loves of my life. Two of the three great loves of your life: me, Brittany, and Sundance. Yeah, I just shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, the the three that I watched that I'll quickly mention. I watched a movie called Thelma, uh, which stars June Squibb. Uh, who did you guys ever see Nebraska? I did, and she's not a young a youngin. She's not. Uh, she's not a young. She's a very sweet old lady, and she's a wonderful actress. In this movie, Nebraska was uh, Will Forte and Bruce Dern. Correct. Uh, so in the movie. Uh, she plays this, this woman Thelma. She's not getting around too well. She's a widow, and uh, she you know she she's not too great on the computer, but she's got a grandson who comes around and helps her. Uh, and so all of a sudden, uh, she gets a call from uh, what she thinks is her grandson. Panic! He's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm in I'm in the police station. Like they told me, you know, like like did this whatever." Uh, and it's like it's a scam. And so they tell her that like she he's like the only, like you have to send me like the money to to ba- like bail me that out. That happened to my grandfather. Did it really? It really did. Yeah. 
Apparently uh, that happens a lot. Uh, the the scammer called him and said, "Grandpa, I need money." Yeah, and he said, "Who is this? Is this Chip?" Yeah, exactly. Which is my cousin. Yep, that's exactly. And he what said, happens. "Yeah, I, this is Chip. I'm stuck in Canada, and my grandfather sent him five thousand dollars." Yep, and so that's what happens to this woman Thelma. She she sends ten thousand uh, dollars to tr- to try and help her grandson, uh, and it turns out to be a scam. Uh, but but Thelma, she's she's kind of upset about it, uh, and she can't stop th- thinking about it, and so she decides uh, to try to track down. Uh, who the people are who does it and but she's this adorable old woman uh, she's not it's not like this is like a John Wick old woman either like if, if you've seen June Squibb she's an adorable chubby old lady and she she's just, 94 by yeah the way. and she decides she's gonna go out and track this, these people down and so like she like you know tricks her, uh, her, her grandson into like taking her somewhere so she can talk to one of her friends and borrow his scooter and drive across town and so like and, it, and it's it's framed not in a parody way but like cut in a way where like to make it feel like it's a little bit of an action thriller kind of movie um, but it's it's very charming it's very very well put together it's it's very well written and, and, and funny um, there are like little nods to like Mission Impossible and, and stuff in it uh, but it was it's, it's very enjoyable I, I liked it a lot and so June Squibb is one of those actresses as well that didn't really become famous until like her 70s yeah right exactly. like she wasn't big in Hollywood I think she did a couple things yeah. but like nothing major but and she's then, 94 uh-huh. yeah but has won an Academy Award. But no, now. but what I'm saying is, like, when you cast this movie and you cast her in it, like, you better have a three day shooting schedule. Like, <laughs> you, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of not joking. Like, if you're 94, this isn't. This can't be a six month shoot because she's no, no. Gonna happen. Well, I mean, it's an indie movie too, so you know. Um, they could, yeah, they could easily replace you, right? Yeah, but well, <laughs> you agreed. <laughs> but it's. Uh, but yeah, it's a it. very very charming movie. Uh, it should come out later this year. Um, it's 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 a lot of fun. Uh, I also saw a movie called A Real Pain, uh, which is written and directed by Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, he also stars in the movie along with Kieran Culkin. They play two cousins uh, who decide to go visit uh, Poland after their grandmother has passed away. Kieran Culkin character here is he's kind of like a uh, an aloof eccentric um, sometimes sometimes a jerk a little rough around the edges and Jesse Eisenberg like has a family and stuff like that and so they decide to take this trip together because uh, their grandmother left them money to to go visit like her home and stuff like that when she died uh, and so it's just like the the dynamic between them is really interesting to watch them play off each other and like watch their characters evolve uh, and it's it's a very touching movie as well it's it's funny um, but yeah very much a, a Jesse Eisenberg movie um, he he has he has some flares of uh the cleverness of woody allen's writing in a way uh but there's like a little bit more shock me with jesse eisenberg yeah and there and but there's a little more um i guess like dramatic edge to it in in a way uh without being you know like pretentious or, or overly dramatic um but it, it was also a very good movie kieran culkin is, is especially uh great in it and, and I'm, I'm really glad to see that he later on in life you know because obviously you grew up in your big brother's shadow who is at the time in the 90s the biggest star in the world yeah hosted Saturday Night Live when he was 12 or whatever it was 10 and so Kieran Culkin now with succession and with you know more movie roles good for him like that he's finally and actually he hosted Saturday Night Live and he's so good in succession too oh god he's amazing me and Brittany are on season 3 of that show and he's just so fucking good so I actually I want to ask you that uh, I'm through like the 5th episode of the first season but I read ahead and I didn't get any spoilers but the memes are like season 6 Nobody's succeeding. Like, it does it ever get better? Well, there's only four seasons, so well, the, the joke was that, yeah. like, it's the fourth season. Nobody's succeeding the company. Like, Brian Cox is still in control after four years. No, so I mean, so I mean, in season three, like that. That's kind of the whole thing. Is like, there's no real in- clear indication of how much time passes okay, in, in the show sure, necessarily. Sure. So it's not like this is going on for years. Gotcha. It seems like it's all happening in pretty quick gotcha. succession. And I did the thing where now we're talking about a TV show, so we're gonna <laughs> move on. But there's a lot of scheming and like. Betraying. And I stuff said we're moving between on. the family. Uh, and then the other movie I watched is called Skywalker's A Love Story, which is a documentary about these two uh, Russian rooftop walkers, uh, kind of daredevils who they're really, kind of, really had me going there. I thought for sure you're, you're a fucking Star no. Wars nerd. Uh, they're, I they're, do too. I'm like, <laughs> oh, great. There are these Here people. We go. These There's people no. out there who uh, they're thrill seekers, they're uh, kind of influencers too. They sneak onto like skyscraper rooftops and like places they're not supposed to be, and take these incredible pictures, hanging off the sides of buildings, climbing cranes on skyscrapers that are in construction. Uh, they post these incredible pictures on Instagram. 
And there's these two uh, Russian rooftop walkers. One of them's a man. One of them's a woman. The women Ange- are Angela Nikula. Yeah, the woman. and women are a rarity in this hobby. Uh, but she joined and she met she met one of the more famous Russian dudes who was doing this. Uh, he uh, asked her if uh, she wanted to do like a sponsored uh, thing with him. Uh, she did. They fell in love, became a couple, uh, and so it kind of follows like their relationship and their kind of rise in fame in like what is this underground sport essentially. Um, and then like, but the way that it unfolds is basically like a heist movie because uh, what it follows is them deciding to basically do like one last big thing COVID happens and they're trying to make these like NFTs with the photos that they sure. shoot up there to try and make some money because they can't do anything else for a little while and so they decide that they're going uh, one of the uh, one of the last buildings of its kind this like for a while that will be built is this skyscraper in Malaysia called Merdurka it is m- a massive huge fucking building and they only have a limited window in which they could actually sneak in, get to the very top and do one of these photos. And they'll be the first people to do it. And so the documentary follows them trying to figure out how to do it and like practicing and all that and following them actually trying to execute getting into the building and everything. And so there's a lot of genuine suspense and thrills and like complications between them as a couple and stuff like that. So like there's charm because of the real love story. There's uh, excitement because of what they do. And like they get some unbelievable shots. You like they just, just the, the, the way that like you see them on top of these buildings and everything. It, it looks gorgeous. Some incredible cinematography. Um, but yeah, great. A uh, really, really solid documentary. Liked it a lot. All right, so again, this has been Go Flix Yourself. Uh, we talked about Brad's movies, uh, Nate. Uh, you can't make the same joke over and over. Yeah, I can't because you. We just said you go really quickly, and then you spent fifteen minutes talking about. I'm three sorry movies. that the movies I saw were good, and that you just watched. I don't know, Alien versus Predator Requiem again. No, <laughs> I was, I've got a couple of them to talk about, but it's not a big deal. All right, hey Ben, what did you see? Predator. <laughs> was that uh, your sick movie? I watch no. I watch Predator every year after we do inappropriate trivia. For it's a big event in town that we raise a bunch of money for. It's charity. a big deal. You guys did a great job. This no, time. honestly, we raised uh, sixteen thousand six hundred dollars for a charity, and it's it's the biggest event of the year for me. It's exhausting to put on. It's it's just it's a, it's a lot. So then on Sunday, I always just sit in the dark and just drink. And watch a movie, and so of course it's always Predator. So I watched Predator, and it was awesome. As First always. time seeing it. What did you think? Yeah, you know, I, it could have been better. R.I.P. Carl Weathers. Yeah, um, it was a little bit more poignant, honestly, this time because I remember a few of the scenes in that movie. And for those of you maybe that don't know, uh, Predator is my favorite movie of all time. Carl Weathers is pitch perfect in this movie. He is phenomenal. There's a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, confronts Carl Weathers' character. And he says, you, you set us up, you dropped the six of us, you made up a backstory, you, set, you dropped the six of us in the meat grinder. And it's this Carl Weathers character is in, in the CIA. And you gotta remember, this is an 80s macho bro fest. It doesn't, there's nothing about this that should be nuanced at all. But Carl Weathers has that literal watery tears in his eyes look like this is the most dramatic thing that he could ever do. So he, he just was all in. And he tells Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're an expendable asset. And the way that he performs that scene with the tears in his eyes almost, it's like I'm losing a good friend and I'm going to, but I need to tell him like, fuck you. This is how it is. He's a, he was an incredible actor. Yeah. He, was. he really was. What do you think is his better role, that or Apollo Creed? I mean, Apollo Creed is like the most iconic thing I can think of for Carl Weathers. Nope. I mean, nope. It is. Chubbs. No, I mean, it is the most indelible uh, uh, mark on cinema he's made. Um, but but th- he's done so much more, obviously, than that. Th- it, it is... Combat Carl from Toy Story 3, 4. It, I mean, playing himself on Arrested Development. No, it's, mm-hmm. it's great. And then, of course, his turn on The Mandalorian is great. But the the thing that, that made him maybe turn to comedy later on, like, he, they, they were all in on him after Apollo Creed, so he started this movie called Action Jackson. Mm-hmm. It didn't do all that well. It, it didn't take off like it should have. Maybe they were trying to say, could this be the action version of, like, Eddie Murphy or, or something like yeah. that, because it was late 80s. It didn't work. So then maybe he had to kind of retool his, his career. It maybe led him to making choices like Happy Gilmore and things down the road. He was really brilliant on all spectrum. He could do drama, action, and comedy. It, it was just... You don't really see that anymore. His, where it's a triple threat. His delivery in Happy Gilmore, when uh, he's talking about, he's like, "Mom wouldn't let me play on the pro tour anymore." And he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Because you're black. And he's like, "Hell no, damn alligator, 
bit my hand off. off. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like, honestly, his choices in those. And then again, playing himself in Arrested Development. I haven't laughed harder. I mean, he's so, so funny. What's cool about Arrested Development, and to 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 his credit, Carl Weathers being you know who he is, um, Mitch Hurwitz told a story about how originally their idea was when they wanted to bring Carl Weathers in, he envisioned doing like a parody of the beach scene with him running on the beach with David Cross as Tobias and everything like that. And so when he met with Carl Weathers and told him, he's like, hey, we want, I wanted to see if you'd be interested in doing a role in here. He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, but it's not going to be just like a bunch of Rocky jokes though, isn't it? <laughs> and, 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 and of course, Mitch Media's like, no. No, not, of course not. Not, not, not at all. all. Why would I do that? Yeah, he's like, we wouldn't want to do that. He's like, he's like, and Carl Weathers himself, he's like, you know what I would really like? He's like, he's like playing myself. He's like, I'd like to be like really cheap. Like, like a really frugal person. Yeah, exactly. Like like uh, like always saving saving money and cutting corners and like trying to make the most out of it. And so like that brilliance of that came character from came from Carl, Carl Weathers. Weathers. Yeah. Which again, when you if you if you come to a creator of a show and you say hi, I'm very famous for other things. What I want to be known as now is a version of myself that's bad. Yeah. That takes a real uh, you know, putting your ego to the side. Yeah. You know I love that. So yeah, no, that was great. Um, but no, I watched Predator, watched Predator 2 as well because I was a little drunk. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as good, but Danny Glover's pretty great. Um, but no, I watched The Beekeeper. You Oh, nice. What did you think? I watched it twice. Was it, wh- oh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's more audacious plot-wise than you could ever imagine. It's and also, you were there for it? It's also worse. Then people are leaning on it. It's got like a seventy. Yeah, it's. it's I've heard not, it's fun though. It's no, no. And again, I do not want to say. You watch it twice. I watched it twice for a reason. The he was on COVID. The um the 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 dialogue and the writing is the worst part. I just wish they would have given a good writer a chance to like really write some clever shit or whatever. It's just so rote. You know, it, it really does take it let out. Me, of, let me ask you about one. Let me see. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That sting. <laughs> that would be great. No, that, no, no, god damn it. No, but they make so many hive protect the queen. Like they just really go all in. Of course. And it's just so stupid. It's so over the top because it's not even him doing it. It's everyone around him. Oh, like, that's worse. Why? You, do, Why wouldn't you give Statham those? Seriously. Lines? Do you know what a beekeeper does? And it's not Statham, it's like some other British guy. He's, he protects the cop. Sometimes they have to kill the queen to make sure. It's like, what are you doing? Like, this is so stuff. But the action, oh, but yeah. let me tell you right now. And then, I'm not going to spoil shit. This will not, you know what? Honey doesn't spoil. I'm not going to spoil this movie. Okay. But I'll tell you. The the audacity of the plot twists in this film oh. is fucking nuts. Like, okay. I, that's why I watched it again. Because I was like, let me see early on if I can tell that these people turn or whatever, do whatever they do. And I, it's like, they hide it pretty fucking well. Okay. Like, it's pretty good. So, overall, love the action. Obviously, terrible writing. Super fun. Okay. You excited about Beekeeper 2? Oh, there there will be probably 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> uh, it's a Beekeeper 2, Hornet's Nest. I, I, I think this film, I don't know what it costs to make, but I think it's like a, like 125, 150 oh, there million already. So. Be. <laughs> um, but honestly, so uh, your movie Thelma, mm-hmm. uh, it's the same plot, except oh, yeah. <laughs> except Jason Statham uh, finds out that, that somebody got scammed and just decides to, you know, keep yeah. the bees. So instead it. of June Squibb, you got Jason, Jason Statham. Statham. Yeah. Uh, so it was great. Who do you think will win in a fight? June uh, Squibb. Squibb. 100%. <laughs> um, I also watched uh, The Holdovers. Hell What'd yeah. You think? What'd you think? I loved it. I think uh, the Academy Awards have been announced. Paul Giamatti did not get nominated. No, he got nominated. He did, for this? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I didn't, I haven't it'd actually be a travesty. I don't think he'll win, but it'd be a travesty. No, no, it just, he needs that nomination. Like, um, he, he's fucking, bro. The whole movie. It's is, a master class. It, it's so, well, I was going to say, it's so well casted. And then the, the, the cast, they don't have, it's a very uh, uh, threadbare plot, honestly. It, there's not a lot of like, Meat nope. to chew into, but so you have to take these scenes that are just these long drawn out moments yep. and make them something. Well, it's all about the characters. No, yeah. exactly. It's it's a it's a whole character study. It's character driven. But as Brad previously said, it, yeah, it, it's it's worth your time. Um, it, it's no matter what mood you're in, you can sit down and watch this, and it will it will make you feel something. It'll make you feel good, bad. There there are definitely some very depressing things about it, but overall, this is a story of just 
people finding each other and whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And I really love that it's not what you think it's going to be because it's not Dead Poet Society. It's not, you know, uh, with honors. There's well, it not, doesn't even have that much of a plot. No, it Honestly, doesn't. Yeah, yeah there's like, no plot. It, it, it veers away from like what, what could have easily been the cheesiness of a story like this. And it all feels very authentic and genuine. And normally... Uh, and that's saying, coming from somebody who loves Dead Poet Society and with honors. Well, again, those are those are different movies. They're yeah. great movies. Um, uh, what's the movie that I shit all over uh, that didn't have a plot? Uh, it's the pizza movie. Oh, Licor licorice pizza. Oh, yeah. I just said, Let's, there's nothing to do here. Like, I hate this movie. I did. When I saw that movie originally, I fucking hated it because there was no linear progression. There was no plot. The whole of it does have a bit of a plot, at least. It's not just an actor's free for all. That's but that's just a. It is mainly about film. letting the actors explore yeah. the characters, and it's super well. I feel done. like you're in a bad place when you watch Licorice Pizza. You probably no, it's it's not great. It's I, not I watched good. it as well. It's not it's great. Not yeah, but Nate, like, I don't trust your opinion. <laughs> it's fine. So then I watched. I also watched. <laughs> Wait, you trust his? Now I do. I watched Ferrari. It goes back and forth whenever when he pisses me off. <laughs> I watched Ferrari. Oh, how was it? Eh. Yeah. See, that's what I've heard. Is Adam Driver good? Yes. And here's the thing. Because um, he loves his film and he talks, and he a loves lot. Italians. Well, he so he's in two. I know, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a smart yeah, conversation. Yeah. So um, Adam Driver can't save this movie. Mm. Penelope Cruz can't save this movie. Mm. They are fucking brilliant. Like Penelope Cruz, especially. Yeah, she is. And honestly, watch this movie just for Penelope Cruz's uh, characterization of 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 Ferrari's wife. She's Ferrari. Her. Watch it for Harari. <laughs> she's fantastic. And I'll say this. I don't think she's ugly. <laughs> uh, does she make your engine broom? <laughs> anyway, she's great. He's great. The acting's very well done. I I don't know. You don't like how the direction is? So it reminds me a little bit of like what Black Hat, maybe like Black Hat is a good example of like, wow, this is a Michael Mann film. And it's not very good. It's better than Black Hat for sure, mm -hmm. but it's not the fault of the people in Black Hat or even the action in Black Hat or whatever. Yeah. It's the fault of the director for making choices. Yeah. Mm. The thing, and this is not a spoiler at all because it happens within the first 30 seconds of the film. In the first 30 seconds of the film, they show Enzo Ferrari driving an old timey car, mm -hmm. and it's Adam Driver as Enzo Ferrari. It is such. Poor CGI. I've heard the crash. Yeah, that he is just no. But even when they show him, it looks like a parody movie. Hmm. It looks like they sh they clearly shot him on a green screen, and he's buzzing around. And there's real imagery behind him from real footage, and he doesn't fit in at all. It doesn't look old enough. It, it's just not well matched, color matched at all. So they didn't spend the money. And that's your opening scene, though. So yeah. from then, I'm like, eh. I'm now trepidation about the rest of this film because of this opening scene. It does a good job later on of like the character story, the development. You know, it really gets into it. There are some great, especially anytime that Driver and Cruz are on set, scene together, in scene together. I I couldn't stop watching. They are so good at hating each other, loving each other, so passionately Italian. Let's say, yeah, it's awesome. Outside of that, it's hard to just keep it going, and it, the, the the rivalry with Maserati isn't really a thing, and the 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 I don't know, just the everything everything else kind of just falls away, yeah. and it's kind of a muddled mess. The did, performances probably give the thing more more legs than it should have. Did you see the uh, the clip that went viral from a Q and A with Adam Driver at a Ferrari screening? Where they like, what he said, he's, you're ugly. No, no, somebody somebody asked him. What would you say to somebody who you know who like likes the movie but like uh, found like the visual effects to kind of like take you out of it and like look you know kind kind of kind of silly cartoonish and, yeah and 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 Adam Driver he just goes I, I don't know fuck you I guess <laughs> that's, like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah what would you say to somebody if you said this to me for real fuck yeah, you because yeah. that's a real thing like, that's yes ending right he's so good at no good for him but it's but that person is not wrong yeah and and it's just it's just that. 
when you're again when you're fucking starting a movie don't start it like that either spend more money or don't start the movie like that how old is michael mann is he 80 80 yeah so that just shows me that it, much like you know maybe a clint eastwood or even a ridley scott where it, it, you're just you're not you're not spending the time that you need to be spending on the things you need to be spending it yeah. on that's all so let's 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 talk about a couple of michael mann films since 2000 so where would you rank this would you say this is better than ali i didn't see ali actually did you see Ali? I haven't seen Ali yet. What Holy about, shit, we both have not seen Ali. I know, Ali. I, I did. That's, um, that's actually a pretty big glaring. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to sign that for one of you guys. What about Collateral? Did you guys see that one? Love Collateral. Love Collateral. Yeah. All right. Collateral's great, great. Collateral is a better film? It, by far. Well, no, sorry, sorry. Collateral is a better film. Miami Vice. I need to rewatch so, Miami Vice because I some, do people, too, some I people don't, really like it. I yep. didn't get it at the time. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll enjoy I, it again. I'm 100% so, agree so with there, you. So Miami Vice is heat light. Okay. So Michael Mann's warm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You remember uh, "Warm" by Michael Mann? Oh no, sorry, Miami Vice. You're not wrong. Heat is his opus. That is the thing that people will remember. Michael, the best Mann. film he's done. Best film he's done. Yeah, it's it's perfect. You know why? It's got a great ass. <laughs> so it's 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 perfectly cast. Wait, is Heat better than The Last of Mohicans? So they're different movies. Yeah, they're very so different. Know, but, very different. But you movies. said his magnum opus. So uh, well, Mohicans put him on the map. Heat. Oh, established I mean, him as films from him. Last so. Mohicans is very good. Heat Heat is operating on another level. It, it just is the 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 shootout scene in Heat should be it is studied mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. film classes. As have mm-hmm. you ever seen Heat? Yeah, I've seen okay. Heat. Yeah, that that he was the first one, honestly, to incorporate real sound. Real. Yeah, the sound real. in that movie is it incredible. Is, if you if the, if you get the chance ever, anybody listening, to see Heat in a theater, holy shit, good for you. The so if, you get a ch- if you get a chance, oh my god, humble bread, to see Heat uh, uh. in an Academy sanctioned theater where there's a Q and A hosted by Christopher Nolan, where Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and Val Kilmer and most of the cast are all in attendance, do that. Do, do I mean, that. The cast, they, they they also can't be now, but the cast why? of Val Kilmer couldn't talk. He couldn't talk then either. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah, no. He that was he they, that was kind of like when it just start, started coming out just that hold up he cards or whatever. Uh, yeah, he yes um, and no only. Answer. Actually, at that point, I think he did say a few things, but like it was very difficult to understand him, and you could tell something was was wrong. The cast of he is just. It's I'm looking at it right now. It's just insane. ridiculous, insane. And it was, at the time, I do remember because I was like I was like 15, 14 at the time. It was like De Niro, Pacino, finally, you know, like The Godfather did it. A little bit, and dude was crazy as hell. But I love Tom Sizemore in a role. Oh, I really absolutely! <laughs> and so, uh, but Val Kilmer was yep. perfect in this. And so, anyway, that's what I consider to be his best film. Uh, Mohegan's probably more of an Academy Award winner. Heat is just like that's Michael Mann at his best because yep. we've seen so many action films since. It's doing what Michael Mann can only do. Exactly, right? honestly, like, like pull together that kind of cast with that kind yep. of like. Gravitas on an action film. Mm. Uh, the the only other action films lately that I've seen that were not directed by Michael Mann that were just as gra- like full of gravitas. The town comes to mind. It's this very visceral, very hardcore movie. Uh, and there's a the, heaviness to heaviness. it. Too. There's a it's dripping. It's 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 heavy to it, like it feels a weighted. Yeah, yeah. You know? Wait, weight is a great film. It's yeah. great. So. So this didn't have that. Like this, sorry, didn't have it. It was lighter. It was and not not lighter as comedy, but just lighter. Like I'm not emotionally impacted unless I'm watching Driver and and Cruz interact with each other. What about is this a better film than Public Enemies? I think Public yes. Enemies is fine. No, I don't know. I haven't seen. I don't. I don't like Public Enemies that much. It's no Public Enemies is fine. Far is better. But uh, uh, you're right though. Miami Vice is is warm. Because there are again, there's he brings back the gun violence in such a way that the, the sounds. There's a scene yeah. in Miami Vice that's one of the best sense heat scenes with gun with guns going off. And I know that sounds need, so silly. I need to watch the movie. It's I haven't so seen fun. this since it came out, I, and, and I, I don't remember like it, loving I didn't like it. it very no, much. Yeah. no. And, and and again, there's enough not to like about it, but there's so many redeeming things about the film. It's it's a lot of fun to watch when you when you watch it again. There you go. 
Uh, I'm going to look real quick to see anything else. I watched uh, the whole overs for Rebel Moon, uh, whatever. Oh, dude, I forgot to talk about Rebel Moon after I watched it, too, because it's such a piece of shit. Uh, it's just, let's, just, let's just talk about it real quickly. It's just a ripoff. It's awful. It's, it's just terrible. Awful. It's awful. It's Zack Snyder trying to do Star Wars, which everyone he's knows. He's also doing like a putting the crew together movie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just- I, I didn't end up watching it because don't, I heard don't, don't. so no, many bad things about I, it. I don't know how you're supposed to care about any of the characters. I don't know how you're supposed to be invested- in any of the world building that he does. I really like the trailer. It, I is, was really it is a hollow shell of a movie that feels like they made a live action version of video game cutscenes. I I just... I, I, I was baffled. I wanted to like it because I, I, I saw the, the trailer. The trailer was good. The visuals looked cool. And Zack Snyder is great at making cool visuals. He does not know how to make a, a good beating story go along with it. It's just... It's so it's so disjointed because they t- they try to tell all these stories at once with these backstories, these characters that yeah. are picking up along the way. Anyway, not worth it. Um, but then I will talk about actually one more. Um, Blackberry. So I, fi- I finally got to around to watching Blackberry. Brad had said it's really great, and it's you know it's, it's just a story about a tech company in the nineties or eighties. Who cares? But man, the performances are incredible. Yeah. Glenn Howerton, nineties, Glenn Howerton should have been nominated for an Academy Award for his portrayal. In my opinion, no, he was very good. fucking amazing yeah. in this role. I've never ever watched a movie where I saw somebody be such a dick and such a pointed asshole and yet I was still rooting for him yeah. the whole fucking time. For sure. That is so rare that honestly I do believe that only really good comedians can do that. Where it's like there's something beneath this asshole that I like. I I just think that like Adam Driver's really good at being a dramatic actor but he got such a funny side to him he can also pull this off like you've got to be both sides of the coin to do a role like this where it's something you don't dismiss as just the asshole yeah. right he was glenn Howerton is perfect in you this have film. to have a look to you as well and glenn Howerton has that look where i'm like i could like you or you could be a douche the, just as easily the way that he physically screams in this film when he's just mad at people i have impersonated it a couple of times uh, I did it uh, so Ashley and I were in the kitchen like three nights ago whatever hey, your girlfriend my girlfriend Ashley and we were sitting there and try again what's that try again you always say that like, your girlfriend Ashley oh sorry I can't do it like you do what, how, yeah my girlfriend Burner <laughs> my girlfriend Ashley I don't see yeah, it doesn't sound like that. anyway so Ashley and I were in the kitchen the other night and we're talking and I said I watched Blackberry and she's like, well, why did you like it so much? And I go, well, he's yell- he yells, but the way he yells, it's almost like this, this visceral, like really big reaction. And she's like, we'll do it. And I go, I don't want to scare the dogs. And she's like, no, I mean, they're in the bedroom. I think they'll be okay. And I did like my version of what he did. And I, I just really put like the loudest I could. And immediately when I did it, her eyes got super wide, like because she's never heard me actually yell like like I was mad, and so I just yelled like he did in the movie, and I I come off like a fucking asshole right there. He does that, and you're still like, kind of want him to win. Yeah, it's so weird. It's a great movie. Have you seen it? Uh, no, I'm not. Seen you it should. Yet. You'll you'll it, like it. You'll a lot. really like it. It's yeah. very. It's, be- and, and it's told- better than you would think. Not that I thought it was gonna be bad, but it's just it just works infinitely better than a movie like you would think like that yeah. would work. Yeah. I also. It's better than it deserves to be. Almost right. Yeah. Like I thought. Because yeah, again, who gives who a fuck about what happened to Blackberry? Yep. It's not what it's about. It's about you know power and what it does to you and like leverage and what it does to you. But also for me, like I look at it as these are these are business people building a business and what happens to that business. I, I, I really obviously identify with that. And you're a business it. man. I love that stuff. I love it. That's why I thought Air was so good. I couldn't believe that it's just been on no one's radar except for yours, Brett, honestly. Yeah. I compliment you on that. Air is one of the best movies of the year from 2023. It's so good. Other than Brad, you guys are fucking morons. Like, everybody's sleeping on that movie. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm I'm annoyed that it didn't at least get like a screenplay nod. Anything. Know, just, but yeah. Or just like, hey, if you're going to write an article saying the top 10 movies of the year, and then you're going to have 10 more as an honorable mention, and you're not going to even mention Air? I, I honestly... Ugh. I think people what it hate, is pe- people hate Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> I I think what it is honestly is that it came out pretty early even yeah, though they did, even though they did do a big awards push for it. I think the other problem is is that there's there's a certain cynicism for people where they're like, well, it's just a movie about a shoe. A shoe. Or, you yeah, know, it's yeah. just, it's just like it's it's about a product. But again, like Blackberry made a couple of top 10s. It's just it's just about a product. Yeah. I I, I think I think from I I think like because Nike is Nike, like it probably feel makes it feel a little more like 
capitalism we, driven we, in we a way. We can't award Nike right. a Oscar nominee. Yeah, but yeah. but for, but for me, like I just I just loved so much that the movie is it, it, it's not just about the origin of the shoe. Like no, that monologue that Matt Damon gives is so fucking good. And well, like, and also like, and that's the core of the movie. These I fucking mean, idiots are out there judging this film without even seeing it. That, I think that's the problem. Can we, can we also give a shout out to the Golden Globes because they did nominate this film for the best motion picture musical and, or comedy and best actor motion picture musical or comedy for Matt Damon. Well, it's a little easier for them because they well, do Brad have, has always said that the Golden Globes are better yeah, he than said the they're the, the, the Lexus yeah. of the Lexus and, of it's like if you want to have like a, a, a Hyundai Tiburon yep. that would be the Oscars and then uh, a Ferrari yep. or a Maserati would be the Golden Globes. Brad for Norman. Jesus Christ fucking whoa. They also got this also got uh, the cast of Air got nominated for a Critics' Choice Award. Which as, Brad also loves. Yeah. The, no, Critics' Choice Award is not good. They also got Best <laughs> Original <laughs> Screenplay and Best Editing for a Critics' Choice. So There you go. There's See? some There's some award shows. There, 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 are, there has been some recognition. But, but the big one. On the big any, one didn't. Yeah. Any real top 10 list, though. Yeah. I didn't really see it getting much. No, I agree. Honor, honorable it, mention, it which been. is sad. So fucking watch Air and then watch Blackberry and tell us which is better. Nate. What are the movies you saw? All right. I have seen a couple movies. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this or not in a previous episode. Did I talk about Wonka? That I actually saw Wonka? I don't remember that. Actually. I don't know if I did or not, but I did see Wonka because I do remember that Brad had some opinions about it. Um, I liked Wonka. It, evidently, it was more, uh, to Brad's opinion, it was more of a, it's a softer version, obviously. It's more of a, 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 a um, easy watch compared to like the, the craziness of the original uh, Gene Wilder version is that yeah. So Gene Wilder, so so I like Gene Wilder's take on Wonka. I like that um, Wonka was a little bit, was a little bit of crazy to him, right? And but sure. also charm, but also crazy. Insane. Like you didn't know yeah. wh- who he really was, right? And then at the end, you're like, oh, the good wins. He's actually a, a decent person, right? But there's there's a little bit of just. He, he, Insanity in his family. Like, <laughs> right. He murdered children, yep. but yeah, no, he's a good guy. But Timothy Chalamet is fine. He's fine. But this film is good, and with a better Wonka, this film is actually a pretty dang good film. Exactly. Um, and so I actually like more this like film. Timothy Charlatan. And and I was here. sad that you know Timothy what that word means. Well, yeah, Charlatan is somebody who doesn't fit the role. It's like faking. I guess that's uh, yeah, I mean, it's not the best. Yeah, but eh, it works. I, I'm gonna give it to him. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. Do you know I'm what a charlatan is, Brad? Or do you not know that what that meaning is? You can be honest. It's a, nobody's listening. It's all right, buddy. Charlatan is more of like an like an like an outcast, isn't it? No, a charlatan oh, is somebody like, like a, a snake oil salesman. Yeah, like snake oil salesman. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, well but like it, a charlatan that's lying to you to get something that he. Well, wants. then I'm wrong, but that still doesn't necessarily fit. I mean, it's not the best word, but it works. It works. Yep. Uh, yeah, because he, I'll take he, that victory though. Because he no, does, I, no, it's fine. <laughs> he does because he does have the genuine skills and stuff like that. But his performance rings false because I don't think that he quite knows how to uh, grasp the more eccentric side of like what the Wonka character is supposed to be. He's just a very one note in this. I don't know if that's Timothy Chalamet as a whole because I've seen him do some other things, but like he does, he's pretty one note. And, yeah, I don't think he has a lot of range. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it. And I think this needed a little bit more range because again, Gene Wilder has a ton of range when he does it. And not, you don't have to recreate Gene Wilder, but I think Wonka as a character you, you probably has sh- to should have, have your own take on it. Yeah, he, he, he's and he he does, but it's just not. It doesn't feel like it works very well. And it's too bad because everyone else does really, really great. Yeah, in this the supporting film. cast. That's another reason I don't think his performance stands out very well is because the rest of the cast is so good. They're so and they, good. And they all have their own strange, unique kind of traits. Mm-hmm. And Wonka, for his, his character, what he's supposed to be, doesn't feel like he's unique or strange enough. And granted, it's an earlier version of Wonka, so he's not going to be quite as weird as Gene Wilder's performance. But the, the, the moments where you do see him show that little bit of like zaniness, it doesn't ring true. And so like that's so what really would you say that he's a charlatan? No, because like I don't really I don't I don't like that word. I don't really know what that means. I'm not gonna Wait, no, we're fine, we're fine. But I like the film. I if you've not seen it, see the film. It is a good film. But All right, I'll see it. It's it's I like the world they create. As I well. said I would see it. Um yeah, yeah, the world the world is is solid. Mm. See, I don't. I don't like the use of charlatan because it I know implies, you're, thinking, you're still thinking about that. Yeah. It implies that Timothy Chalamet is like 
lying in, or yeah, like intentionally, intentionally lying or like, but like it's just it's just that the performance doesn't feel. Yeah, and that's authentic. why that's why that's why I said it. more like Timothy Charlatan is a is a joke, as in like this is a false representation of what Wonka should be. But it really it's apply. a one off. It's, just it's not, not exactly dead to rights. Uh, why would it be? Just admit you don't know what the fucking word means, and we'll move on. Uh, I mean, I said that, but yeah, that's fine. It doesn't so make we'll you. Move on. Doesn't we'll make you. Fuck. Doesn't make you more right. Yeah, it so. does though. It actually does exactly that. No, it doesn't though. It feels bad for you, and anyway, it feels good for me. Uh, I feel good in general, just because I'm better. <laughs> Nate. All right, moving on. I saw <laughs> another film <laughs> called The Underdogs. Have you heard of this film? Uh, I think so. It is. We've talked this, about this before. That in the '90s was the golden era of kids sports films yep right where there's a kid team the mighty ducks sure. little uh, giants little giants yep. sandlot yep this is a film Even like rookie of the year in that vein that is stand by me ra- <laughs> stand by me i assume this film is rated r it should be if it's not it is um starring snoop dogg oh okay yep it is um, produced by Kenya Bar- Barris, I mm-hmm. think. Is that his name? Yeah, the co creator um, of Blackish. Yep. And so Snoop Dogg plays this former professional football player that is very, you know, uh, he's very, very good. But I assume he, he was a quarterback. No, he was a wide receiver. Okay, that works too. And he, he just, he was very much about himself, like wide receivers often are. And so, but then ends up retiring and he just has nobody kind of and he's still very kind of egocentric and he ends up because you know he's losing popularity all these things he coaches this youth football team but i am not kidding you the language on this film is ridiculous (laughs) it is so Like, like bad news bear style where they're using the f word and stuff way worse nice. than the f word way worse well it's oh. snoop dogg so yeah. i mean that doesn't mean he was huggy I figured, bear i figured and Starsky and Hustin, uh, and the one c- of the c word one of the kids name is uh titty um <laughs> <laughs> so he calls him titty because you need to you need to you need to hold the football like you hold a titty i do uh, like that like uh to clarify well now, what I, what now I mean, i'm gonna watch this movie. what i mean by hard r is like one of the one of the kids' name is Titty. One of the kids' name is sorry, Titty. One of, the, one of the names Titty. I mean, it's just it's it's <laughs> absurd how how like Snoop Dogg this film gets. That's honestly, crazy. But um, it's fine. It is. It is. Why did you it watch is this? Paint by numbers. Well, because it's a kids' sports film, and I. But you didn't kids. watch it with your kids. I started, and then I turned it off. <laughs> is it rated R? I don't it know because it's on Amazon Prime. You don't really see those things like. Oh, it's got to be rated R, though. I, mean, I, those, I assume those there's F dog. Yeah, there's a the lot of. What's the oh, F word in the movie? So yeah. it's so oh, it's, it's definitely yeah. R so it's R. I mean, even if it's not, it doesn't have an actual R rating. Like it's yeah, an R rated yeah, sure, level sure, movie. Sure. Wow. Yeah, okay. it is rated R, by the way. Um, wow. And so then I went and finished it without my kids. So sure. Like, I want to see if this actually hey, like. How does this? How do they win? Does this pay off? You know. No. And. It, it's not a bad film. It isn't. It's just it is raunchy, ra- vulgar. But did you and like it, it? honestly? The raunchiness is just in the language. It isn't like a raunchy film any anywhere else. But so it, just it was fine. It, it Snoop Dogg actually does fairly well in this film. He he plays this role really well. Um, he, he's a football fan himself, so sure. he understands this kind of film. Starring um, Calvin Brodus. <laughs> yes. Did you like it? I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. I didn't love it, but I thought it was fine. Um, it's just who's it for? That's what I want to say. Yeah, like, Who, it's a kids' sports movie made for adults. The, like, I'm not a weird. prude, yeah, but I felt sure weird watching yeah. it. Like you know, that is, that is strange. Uh, the other one I saw, the other film I saw, I've got two more. Self Reliance. Have you seen this one yet? No, but I know this is you're gonna Jake like. Johnson's you're movie. gonna like this film. Oh, I watched this. I watched this. You did? What did you think? I actually did. Wow. Uh, I think Brad's gonna like this. No, film. I, I think you will. The premise looks fun. Yeah. yeah. So Jake Johnson wrote and uh, produced and stars and directed in this film. This is his baby. Uh, I actually just listened to an interview. Uh, of his on the Pete Holmes podcast. I don't often listen to Pete Holmes, but I because it's seven hours long now. It's so long. Um, but I like Jake Johnson a lot because I'm such a new Says girl the fan. Podcast that's bordering on an hour and a half. Yeah, listen, literally, they're three hour episodes now. But so I wanted to listen to this, but it was really interesting because Jake Johnson talks in that podcast about 
the the necessary relationship that a creative person has to have with the audience. And he said some things sometimes films he really dislikes because they have no relationship with the audience. They don't care about how people are actually going to view the film. They just want to create the film. And I'm, then making, it's your I'm fault. making the thing for it's me. Not your. It's your fault for if not liking it. If you don't like it, it, fuck you. Yeah, it's, right? you didn't get it. Right. And his point is is. No, you're a bad filmmaker then because you, you, like people should actually like to see your film. You should actually have a relationship and you should actually want to say, oh, I, I kind of, not to say I'm only creating it for the masses, but there has to be an audience there. There, there is that, that juxtaposition between I'm going to make the broadest movie possible so that CBS can put it on on Thursday yep. nights. That's terrible. Yep. But you also don't want to make such a niche film that, like, me and my buddies think it's hilarious and no one else does. What are you doing? Well, you've right? taken out the consideration yeah. for the audience exactly. to say, well, yeah. they might not get this and we should actually think about them getting this. You know? We, so, Brad and I have had this conversation, and I think actually, Nate, you, you, we all have, where it's like movies like Popstar, Hot Rod, uh, even even Napoleon Dynamite necessarily wouldn't have been the biggest hit that it was. It just got. A groundswell, but that's not a movie made for everybody. It just was one that hit the mainstream. Yeah. But a movie like Hot Rod, if you look that up, it's it's not very well received. It's it didn't do well at the box office, you know. But that's a fucking hilarious yeah. movie. It's a cult favorite. Exactly. And these become cult favorites because they're it's not for everybody, but it's for enough. Yeah, and and it also it didn't have its audience right when it released, right. but it found its audience. Exactly. Um, but I like that Jake is talking about the fact that he's at least cognizant of making a movie for, for, for more than just himself. Yep. Um, so anyway, this film is about uh, a man that has an opportunity to go on a game show. And the game show is essentially, you will get killed. We will hunt you. We will hunt you. For real. And kill you. Unless you're with somebody else. Yeah, you will win $1 million yep. at the end of 30 days if you stay alive. We will be actively hunting you. Why would anybody sign up for that? Well, there's one big caveat. If you're within dangerous proximity to somebody else that could get hurt, we will not act on that. Yeah, so if you're if, if the three of us are together, yep. we're, we're in no fear of them hunting us or hurting us or anything like so that. So the character that Jake plays... Uh, overestimates let's say mm -hmm. how how easy that will be to just always be around somebody especially when people don't necessarily want to be around you because that's what this film ends yes. up being about is the importance of having people around you right that's that's the kind of film he's trying to make the, the very and this is no spoilers but in the very first opening part of it after this kind of happens to him we realize immediately that he doesn't have the best relationship with his his family right and so maybe you can't just you know, handcuff yourself to mom for 30 days because maybe, maybe nobody believes that this is real. Right. And so like, honey, I get it, but I'm a nurse. I've got to work. I can't take time off. And it's, it's a million dollars. Yeah, but I've got to go to work. That's kind of like the very start of this. Yeah. And then of course it goes bonkers from there yep. in the best way. Like, Do you know I, what I love, I love about it. this film though, Ben? I love the film itself. I loved it. It was 87 minutes. Yeah. And I love a good 87 minute film. Quick hit. And it, it got in, it got out, it did what it did. Um, I still, after all these years, Anna Kendrick, uh, Anna Kendrick call me, I love you. Um, <laughs> True story. She's um, adorable still. And so it just, what a fun film. I think you can see it on Hulu maybe. Yep. I think that's um, where I watched it, yeah. No, it's so. well worth everybody's time. It's it, A again, lot of fun. Well worth your time because it is so short. It is also, short, but so also good. a story that's just fun. Like, it yeah. is It is not the story that you've seen all, all yeah. of it, it, Different enough to, to make it a mark. And then the final one uh, that I want to talk about that I, I got to see is a TV series. So, mm. Brad, I'm just going to be talking to you right that's now. That's right. So, I did get to see this, this TV series that I really like called Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Have you guys seen it yet? No, I've heard no. it's good, though. I've not seen it. It is so much fun. I'm too busy with Reacher. You will, both of you, you haven't finished Sex Seeds and Reacher? What are you doing? Watching movies. Are we not 40-some-year-old men? That, I'm watching movies. Yeah, come on. But I, I've, I'm through two episodes. <laughs> it is so much fun. I'm going to walk upstairs and watch the third episode of Reacher tonight. It is so much fun. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, if you get a chance, that's all I'll say. It's just if you get a chance, watch this. It is a is lot Is it really of fun. worth your time? It's so much fun. Okay. I, I can't wait. I hope they do another season. Uh, it is... It's a it's a great mystery. It is how a great much love it, story. How much it, it is, is is the same kind of premise as the movie. Close enough, but very expanded and different enough as okay. well. Like it, it is. So clearly, it's, not, it's, it's not a retread. It is based on this. 
pro- so it, let's say this. It is based on the world of Mr. and Mrs. Smith where Mr. and Mrs. Smiths exist. Okay, okay. But it is a very different Mr. Gotcha. and Mrs. Yeah, because they, they can't necessarily take it to the level that the movie does because like the conflict is going to be spread out across the series. Well, yeah, you're, the first episode, they're going to find out that each other is a spy and they need to kill each other, right? That's going to be yep. tough to do for eight, eight episodes. Right. And so, and then, like I said, the, the the premise is is that other Mr. and Mrs. Smiths exist. Sure. And so, this is about one of those. This is of, about all the Smithesses. Yeah. So, uh, the some we, some westerns. It the is, Smiths. but mainly Smiths. It is a lot of fun, and I'm really glad they made it. And I hope shit. I hope people watch it. Westerns, not westerns. So Smith, Smith, yeah. Smith and Wesson. And yeah, Donald Glover's great. No one cares. No one's right. listening by now. Donald Glover is great. He's yeah. great in everything. And Maya Erskine is in it too. Yeah, she's great. From Pen 115 or Pen 15. Penis. It's not Penis. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, call him Penis. All right. I, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, a TV show real quick. To, um, uh, it's not one that warrants a lot of exploration, but it's a show that <laughs> wow, I adore a- uh, because it's so charming uh, and it's, it's kind of out of left field for the kind of things that I usually watch. But if you haven't heard of the show or if you haven't watched it, there's a show on the Netflix Big Bang Theory. called... Uh, <laughs> Sheldon, <laughs> young Sheldon. Why would you take my thunder? That's like, I'm sorry. That, I want to talk about Big Bang Theory. I'm like, you're making a fucking joke out of it. I I love the idea that Brad would legitimately like. I just want to take Mom. a time out and Mom. honestly, let's not fuck around right now. <laughs> young Sheldon, no, stop. Well, yeah, I'm trying to talk about. I want. Yeah, like I mean, <laughs> I'm dying. I died. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm sorry. Jim Parsons is really good. <laughs> You know, he plays like he's a nerd, and so like I, I identify with him, oh, and like he's got God. these friends, and like it's really funny. Oh, just, God. Just, <laughs> sorry, I'll give it a shot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just watch Big Bang Theory. Yeah, Big Bang Theory, the best thing that's ever happened in the world. No, uh, on Netflix, there's a show called Love on the Spectrum. Uh, it is a, uh, a a documentary reality kind of show. It started in Australia. Now there's a U.S. version, uh, and it follows young people who uh, n- they're not all young. There's a couple older people too, uh, but they're in their like 20s, 30s, uh, and they're all on, on the spectrum. They all have have some form of autism of varying degrees, and they all have different tics and things like that. And it follows them as they are trying to to date and find romance and everything. And so it has these talking heads with them and finding about their lives, watching them go on dates with each other. And they're all just so earnest and genuine and like learning about stuff and and eager and because they all do have their own proclivities and eccentricities like it's very like fun to watch them like engage and like figure, I've heard this is figure stuff out it's it is it's, it's, it's just such a a, a a shot of joy yeah. and 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 love and just it's 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 beautiful to watch and then like you you root for every single one of them um and it's just it's just a wonderful show but both versions the australian version and the u.s version the u.s version just came out with a second season and that's what, uh, what i just watched and so yeah that is shocking me that not that you've got a good heart but I, it does shock me that you liked this show yeah. because this doesn't seem and like a show that you would and it's, spend be, a lot it's, of time it's because it's not like framed as like reality show yep. garbage you know like so uh, it's, it borders on documentary almost, yeah absolutely right? yeah for sure for sure it's 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 just very good so yeah if you want to warm warm your heart give give that a watch so are we gonna watch trailers or not what are we gonna do uh let's just quickly talk about one trailer because we're, we're pushing there's one in. worth watching yeah we we saw the trailer uh for the remake of roadhouse, roadhouse. starring roadhouse Starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, if you don't know, is... And I don't think Conor McGregor is like the number two build person in this film either. I mean, he, he pretty much is, though. Like, they, they are they are putting the, the poster out there of, like, Jake Gyllenhaal versus Conor McGregor. Like, it's a it's a thing. I mean, it's it, it, he is a very, very popular mixed martial arts athlete. Uh, even though he wasn't the best of all time, he was yeah, the it's most... Yeah, like, it, it's like when they teamed up Dennis Rodman with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Double Team. Uh, yeah, it's like actually kind of exactly like that. Yeah, no. Except for this is a Doug Liman movie who did uh, what? Are you, what what are, identity? What are, yeah. So so yes, I just feel like Jessica Williams should be second build on this. Sure, I mean she should be, but it's that's or not Daniela how Melchior. This is made for the the brosives of the world, yeah, and I'm here um, for it. So that's why I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> and it'll uh, be on my best of 2024 film. I just I love the fact they're doing this. It's so silly and over the top. And Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, honestly, we could, we saw from Southpaw. That he can he can get ripped up and like look the part, uh, so this is fun to me. I mean, no, it lo- it looks it looks surprisingly good. It looks really fun. I'm I'm excited to see it. It's it doesn't feel like it's quite as over the top as the original Roadhouse. Uh, it is in some ways, but like you know, I didn't see one throat rip. That's a good point. But maybe they're saving that. You don't. I hope your, you don't want to give your throat. Listen, rip by the way, if if they don't do like some sort of like, because that's that's what Patrick Swayze 
was known for in Roadhouse. He took a man's Adam's apple out. Yeah. I need to see that. I'm I'm not going to be upset if it happens. But maybe maybe they'll go a step further. Maybe he'll just rip another part of his body out or something nope. like that. Nope. Would you would you rather see him rip someone's throat out or pull someone's dick off with his hand? That's a really easy answer. A. Oh, I, I don't know. I still want to see a throat rip. I don't know. I would love to see Jake Gyllenhaal just stretch someone's <laughs> what the fuck dick off their wrong? body. <laughs> this is how you can tell it's late in the night. Brad's like, I want to see a dick yeah. rip. Yeah, you've never seen a dick rip before. I've never seen a dick rip. You know what? To be fair, never seen a dick rip. Yeah. I mean, McGruber's rip throats, so like- Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I want to see- I You know what? Some... I stand corrected. Yeah, either that or reaches his hand up someone's ass and pulls, it, pulls it out. Just like an anal cavity- Like a re- fucking sleeve. Retreat. Yeah. Like when like you, you get your sleeve stuck on your hand. Like a reverse wizard sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> Roadhouse. Slivered weave. But no, I, I think this looks like a lot of fun. No, um, it's just, it's silly. It's over the top. There's it, there's some production value there, obviously. Mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal is an A-list actor. They are recreating this and doing the best they can with a big budget. Like, this should be fun. And Billy Magnuson's in this, and I love Bi- Billy Magnuson. Love he's, Billy Magnuson. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to play a fun role in this. This is a film that, if it went to the theater, I would go see it in the theater, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it really looks. I hope not. I hope they give it a limited silly. theatrical release. I mean, I don't think they are because it comes out March eighth. It comes out in a month. That's still a month and a half away. We'll see yeah. No, a month. Still, it's, it's still a month and a half away. Good, that's a good Valentine's. Still movie. got a good couple of months away. I'm gonna take my girlfriend to go see it. I might take Ben's girlfriend to go see it. Please do. And then you just leave that anal stuff on the table, okay? Let's rip throats only. Oh, I thought you were going another direction. <laughs> 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 well, this is good. Go flex yourself. I don't know. Whatever. It's a good podcast. Uh, listen, well, we're fine. We're fine. Listen we're fine. You want. I don't know. It's been three. We're out of sorts. It's been three weeks. I don't know. Yeah. We just. We, well, next week, we'll bring back a game. We'll do all yeah, of our we'll little all the fun, stuff. fun little trinket stuff. We let Brad just go on way too long with his stupid he, movies. We had a lot of films to cover. My it, stupid it, movies? Your my, stupid Sundance almost shit. Almost all my movies are better than the ones that you saw. Yeah, but nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear more. Like we, they want to, you know. Uh, Alex Pappas wants to hear twenty more minutes about Roadhouse and twenty less minutes about Thoma. I think you would rather hear twenty less minutes from you. Period. Disagree. I'd see a film with June Squibb ripping a throat out. <laughs> I would watch the hell. I would. Yes. Well, Hollywood, get on it. We want to see it. it Cause get on it soon. Yeah. Honestly, again, you got about six months. Yeah. Beekeeper versus Thelma. Oh. oh, that's the universe we need to create. Widowkeeper. Now I'm talking. Widowkeeper. Yeah. Widowkeeper. We I love it. Well, guys, uh, if you like this stupid- Widowkeeper 2, Black Widower. That's enough. If Sorry. you like this Sorry. stupid podcast, just just rate us five stars. Just do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, do whatever. Tell your friends or don't. Yeah, don't. Like, I mean, I, just, I don't like, care. Yeah, just, I love you, but you don't love me. It's fine. Yeah, you can listen and you can tell your friends or you can uh, fuck off, I guess. No, I won't. No, not oh, that. Oh, sorry. Not that. No, sorry. Not sorry. You can listen or not. We won't. We won't judge you either way. Right. We would prefer. No, we will judge you, but like. Nate. We, uh, well, let's just be honest with the listeners. No, I'm being honest. Like, we, you can listen or not. You can tell your friends or we not. We judge people we that would, don't listen to we this. We would prefer if you listened. Yeah, but if you don't, like, then just drop Listener, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No? These guys are oh, okay. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. I just, I just, I just, I, let's be honest for once, all right? With the listeners. We have yeah. 13 listeners, and like, I'm trying to get to 14, and you guys are over here just telling them to fuck off? No. No, we're saying if you don't listen. Yeah. That's not. Anyway. That message will get to him. Bye, everybody. Bye. Nah, cheating, eh?